What went through your mind as you watched the president proclaim MLK Day and, and go through all of that, as far as all these alleged comments as well? I mean, all of this, the timing, what did you think? Well, first of all, Alex, uh, yesterday my mind was uh, mostly occupied in uh, thinking in memorial of 200,000 Haitians who lost their lives in a cataclysmic earthquake eight years ago yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, we had the additional shock of the president's rather vulgar words uh, and uh, it is absolutely surreal to now see him uh, uttering uh, quotes from uh, Dr. King uh, and attempting uh, to uh, convince all of us uh, that uh, he represents the inclusive uh, ideal of American immigration uh, when he has uh, refused to negotiate on DACA, when he has refused to extend temporary protective status for those Haitians affected by the earthquake, and over 200,000 El Salvadorians who he's talking about deporting. So it's a deeply disorienting time. Do these comments feel different to you, sir, than the litany of comments? I was looking at a list of things the president has said, which has drawn criticism of, of them being racist, uh, particularly that which happened in Charlottesville when he blamed both sides instead of just calling out KKK, white supremacists, white nationalists. Alex, in addition to being a proud Haitian American and a former U.S. ambassador, uh, to a region that the president has just uh, talked about in the most derogatory terms. I'm also a lifelong New Yorker. So some of us know uh, Donald Trump uh, exceedingly well. We remember uh, when his, uh, he and his father were taken uh, to the courts by the federal authorities for race-based clauses uh, in their housing contracts. We remember when he attacked uh, young men and accused them of the most heinous crimes and said they should be executed, five African-American young men who were later exonerated. There was a long pattern of this kind of vulgar language that's race-based from Donald Trump. Uh, so regrettably, it's not altogether shocking to us. What is shocking uh, is the inability of Republican leaders to grow a spine uh, in this moment. Uh, Alex, you are rightly proud of your lineage to the founding father of this country, George Washington. I am. Republicans have to decide if they're going to stand with George Washington, who said that the bosom of the United States must be open not just to the opulent stranger, but those who are repressed and persecuted the world over, whom we invite to participate in our rights and privileges. Or are they going to stand with Donald Trump, who uh, does not lift up that ideal, would rather us return to the quota system before 1965, uh, and has made it very clear what he thinks of people who come from countries that are dominated by people of color. And you, sir, are rightly proud of your uh, lineage as a Haitian American. I know you were also born in Congo. So yes. if you add all of that together, these comments specifically, how does that affect the diaspora? No, this is uh, a moment of inflection for the diaspora. And I will tell you, Alex, that my uh, emails have been blowing up, not just from proud Haitian Americans and Nigerian Americans and Congolese Americans, uh, but also from uh, incredible uh, citizens of those countries in the Caribbean and uh, the African continent. All of my South African friends have been saying to me, we've always looked to the United States as a beacon, uh, as a place of aspiration, uh, a place that lifts up the values of inclusive uh, immigration, uh, even while being mindful of the need to maintain your sovereign borders. This blows this away, and we're not really quite sure what the national others to speak up, which is why on Monday, Alex, uh, I'm joining people from the diaspora in Times Square on Monday afternoon to demonstrate, to speak up about dignity and rights. There are those who support this president under what would seem to be almost any circumstance whatsoever, but they say this supports his Make America Great and America First campaign. Particularly, I want to mention David Duke, of course, former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, who said on Twitter, the president is saying blunt but truthful things no other president in our lifetime would then would dare say. Do these remarks now cast a, a cloud over this president's uh, immigration policy? Well, there it is. When David Duke uh, is celebrating your policies, uh, when you don't hesitate to call supremacists, white supremacists who march in Charlottesville, uh, fine people, uh, it's no surprise that uh, these are questions that are being asked at the United Nations today, the European Union uh, today, uh, and the African Union today about the course of, of the United States and whether or not we can be faithful uh, uh, partners. Mm -hmm. uh, Republican leadership must step up, disown uh, this value set, uh, and make clear 
that they uh, are that uh, that we are still that beacon. And if we look at the president's comments, they would seem to favor immigration from European countries. He mentioned Norway well, specifically. Look, um, but uh, but I want to talk about the Migration Policy Institute yeah. and the stats from that, sir, because African immigrants they are more highly educated among those with at least a bachelor's degree. You've got 39 percent of these they are sub-Saharan Africans. You have 57 percent of Nigerians and South Africans compared to 31 percent of the U.S. population. 29 percent of the foreign-born population. I mean, these statistics completely counter the president's position. These are remarkable people who are contributing to economies here, who are contributing through remittances to economies uh, at home, who uh, are forwarding and advancing the notion of what it means to be uh, Americans in the 21st century. Uh, that's what we all need to embrace and lift up. Last night I went to a ceremony for 200 new Americans who had just been sworn in, most of them from the places that uh, this president uh, derides. And in addition to being uh, brilliant and committed Americans, they also demonstrated a courageousness in making their way here yeah. uh, to be uh, able to affirm their pledge of allegiance. And I'm going to honor that uh, on Monday in Times Square. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching. Watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.